Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about an alternative way of determining the Sabbath day, scripturally. And in this class, we're going to use the scripture to show you how the Sabbath day is determined. Turns out there are two ways to determine the Sabbath day based on what we learn in scripture. Of course, there are many ways you can determine the Sabbath day based on non-scriptural documents, historical books, and Josephus, and all kinds of other documents can be used to come up with just about any Sabbath day you want. But when it comes to the scripture, it is very clear that there's actually only one true way to do it. One way that matches up with the scripture. So we're actually going to be looking at what that way is. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how I have always calculated the Sabbath day, going all the way back to 1998. When reading through the book of Exodus, it was made clear that we were supposed to be keeping those feast days, that it wasn't necessarily for some Jews in some foreign country. But those holy convocations was for all humans. So we're going to look in Leviticus chapter 23 and other places to see how the Sabbath days are determined. Then we're going to look at what I call the Pentecostal criterion. Looking in Leviticus 23 and chapter 15, there's some scripture related to the Feast of Weeks that gives a very precise day. And we're going to use that criterion against our determination of the Sabbath days to see if it matches up scripturally or not. We're going to look at the English, the Greek, and then we're going to look at the Hebrew at Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 15. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we're looking at Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 through 16, which is the only canonized description of how the sacred calendar works. In other words, when you're looking through the 66 books of the Bible, this here in the first chapter is where we learn that the sacred calendar or the Hebrew calendar is based on the sun, the moon, and the stars. Thing about it, this is the only information we're given related to how the sacred calendar works in the 66 books. This is why I say it's the only canonized description. But when we get into the first book of Enoch, which was actually written before the book of Genesis, we find the description of how the Hebrew calendar works, how the sacred calendar works, how the sun, the moon, and the stars are used as the timepieces for the sacred calendar. For instance, how in chapter 71, verses 2 and 3, we learn that the day begins with sunset. Although man changes his day at 12 a.m., the biblical day changes at sunset. We see that, like we said, in 71 verses 2 and 3. Now, of course, this is really convenient as far as humans are concerned because sunset is the only time of the day when just about all humans are awake. I mean, hardly anybody is awake at 12 a.m. And very few are awake at sunrise. But unless you're sick or working a night shift or something like that, chances are you'll be awake at sunset. Now, people like to argue this point because common sense tends to kick in and people start to believe that the day begins with sunrise or something like that. But the Bible is not written based on common sense, else we wouldn't need a Bible at all. The scripture is actually here to override our common sense. When our common sense would normally lead us astray, we have the verses like this one here, where it's talking about the first law of the luminaries is that the sun and the light arriving at the western gates of heaven is talking about sunset. So this verse, along with the many verses that we could find in the Bible, confirms that the day changes. We go from one day to the next at sunset. But anyway, the next thing we need to understand about how the sacred Hebrew calendar works 
is that the months begin with the new moon or the appearance of the new moon sliver determines when a new month starts. We learned that in chapter 72 of the book of First Enoch in verses four through five. There's many other verses we could have pulled out, but this one here shows clearly that at the time that the new moon appears, we get a new month talking about the 0% moon, not the full moon, because notice right there it says at the time it appears. So you're going from a 0% moon or a moon that can't be seen at all to the day in which the sliver of the new moon appears starting a new month. This is also an area of contention for those who prefer using common sense or their public school education to determine the beginning of the months instead of using the scripture, which is the authority on the matter. But anyway, the other element to the timepiece, as mentioned in Genesis chapter one, is the stars. And we learn in chapter 71, verses six through eight of the book of First Enoch, that the tropical year begins in the star constellation of Aries. This occurs after the spring equinox. That is the first window of the tropical year. But notice that the verse talks about the sun with the moon. So what you have to begin the sacred year is the convergence of the sun and the moon after the spring equinox, which determines the first day of the sacred year. So in summary, you have the sun that governs the day from sunset to sunset. Then you have the moon, which governs the month from one new moon to the next. And then you have the stars, which govern the year as we progress through the Maseroth or the 12 constellations arriving back at Aries to begin a new year. But anyway, let's look now at how we determine the days in which the Sabbath days occur. The first verse we'll look at is Leviticus chapter 23 and verse three, which talks about the Sabbath day and when it occurs. But notice here how it really only says six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So it don't necessarily tell us which day of the month the Sabbath days would be as much as it's telling us that we are only allowed to work six days. It would be against the law, against the instructions of the Bible to work any seven days in a row, no matter when our work week starts. So from that verse, all we know is that there is six working days and then there is a Sabbath day. But then when we start to look down in Leviticus chapter 23 and 24, we see that the first day of the seventh month is a Sabbath day. And we see over in Ezekiel chapter 46 that every new moon day is a Sabbath day. Like we said earlier, the month begins with the new moon. So the first day of every month is a Sabbath day. We see the new moon sliver at the beginning of the day at evening time, right after sunset, which begins the first day of the month. And that reminds me of something we were talking about earlier about how the day transitions at sunset. Well, for those who don't understand that, they typically miss the majority of the new moon day because their new moon would have started that morning, but they would have had to wait until evening to verify that the new moon had taken place. And by the next morning, they will be on the second day of the week. So they've pretty much missed the new moon altogether. But anyway, when you understand that the day transitions at sunset, which is the time that we verify the new moon, you understand that that verification, when that new moon is sighted, begins the 24 hour period that we know as new moon day, which corresponds to what we was reading in Ezekiel chapter 46 verses one through three. That is a Sabbath day. Then from second Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 17, we can see that the eighth day of the month 
is a time when they came to the porch of the Lord as part of the sanctification process. And then we see in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 39 that the 15th day of the month is also a Sabbath day. So you have the first day of the month as a Sabbath day and the 15th day of the month as a Sabbath day. Then we see over in the book of John verses 19 and 31 that the 15th day of the first month is a Sabbath day. That is the beginning of unleavened bread. And then for another reference, we have Esther chapter 9 and verse 18, which talks about how they rested on the 15th day of the month. So it's clear that the 15th day of the month is a Sabbath day. Then as far as the 22nd day of the month, we could use Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 11, where it's talking about the Omar count. The beginning of the 50 days starts on the morrow after the Sabbath. So looking at this calendar from 2022, we see we have unleavened bread that started on the 17th and it lasted seven days. And then we had the Sabbath day on April 24th. And then the first day of first fruits started on April the 25th, the day after the Sabbath day. And for another reference for the 22nd being a Sabbath day, we have the book of John chapter 20 verses 19 through 26, which starts off talking about the first day of the week when the disciples found our Messiah's tomb empty. And then when we read on down, we see that he, our Messiah actually appeared to them eight days later. So looking back at how all of this works, you have our Messiah entering the belly of the earth as the story goes on the 14th day of the month. And he remained there on the 15th day of the month and then was resurrected on the 16th day of the month, which is the first day of the week. But then he appeared to his disciples eight days later, which would have been the 23rd day of the first month and the day after the Sabbath day. And continuing this pattern, we could determine that the Sabbath days are the first, the 15th and the 22nd day. And then we can see how the eighth day falls into the pattern based on second Chronicles in chapter 29. And then we make the assumption that the 29th day is a Sabbath day as well. But then we have the Pentecostal criterion where in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 14 and 16, it gives us the calculation for determining the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. Now, I had been determining my Sabbath days since 1998 based on this 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th day of the month. But it was actually back in about 2017 that I had a major hiccup when it comes to determining our Sabbath days in that manner because of what we read in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 14 through 16. It again is talking about this 23rd day of the first month, which is the day that this Omar count starts, this 50 days where we are to eat bread nor parched corn. But notice in the King James Version how it says, from this day, the 23rd day, you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath day, which is the 23rd day from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So like I said, back in about 2018, I started comparing my way of determining the Sabbath day with the Pentecostal calculation and it didn't match up. You see how we have the 23rd day of the month first fruits right here on the 25th in the year 2022. But then when you start to count off 50 days, you have the 25th as day one, May the 3rd will be day nine, May 10th will be day 16, May 17th as day 23, May 1st is day 30, June the 19th will be day 46. Then you have 47, 48, 49, and 50. But notice that that day is one or two days before the Sabbath day. 
But notice back in Leviticus chapter 23, that is saying that this 50th day is supposed to fall on the morrow after the Sabbath day. So instead of two days earlier, it was supposed to be the day after. And then notice this part where it says seven Sabbath days complete. Well, looking back at our calendar here, the date of first fruits would have been the day after the Sabbath day. So the first Sabbath day would have been at the end of that week around May the 1st, the second one, May 9th, 3rd, May 16th, then May 23rd, the 5th, May 30th, the 6th being June the 8th, but the 7th Sabbath wouldn't have occurred until June the 15th. But our 50 day count ended on June the 13th. So there was only six complete Sabbath days, not seven, between April the 25th and June the 13th. So this presented a huge problem for me back there. And like I said, 2017, because I lost faith in the Sabbath day calculation. I wasn't sure how it was supposed to work anymore until I discovered the Septuagint translation of Leviticus chapter 23 and found that it read a little bit different. You notice that in verse 15 is still talking about how the Omar count starts on the day after the Sabbath day, which still lines up with April the 25th in the year 2022. But then notice the difference there where it says, from the day on which you shall offer the sheaf of the heave offering seven full weeks. Whereas the King James Version says seven Sabbaths shall be complete. The Septuagint says seven full weeks shall be complete. And the same thing is said there in verse 16, where it says unto the morrow after the last week shall you number 50 days. Where in the King James Version, it says the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. Well, that's actually a difference that makes this method of determining the Sabbath days work out. Because instead of having to worry about seven Sabbaths being complete, we just have to worry about seven full weeks or seven seven day periods, which means that the date of Pentecost falling on June the 13th actually fits that criterion. So whereas before this was a major hiccup in the Sabbath day calculation, it was with the aid of the Septuagint that I was actually able to regain confidence in determining the Sabbath days on a monthly basis, where each time we would have a new month, the Sabbath days would change to a new day. But then in recent conversations, this problem arose again when we consider the Hebrew and what the Hebrew actually says. So whereas before I had problems with the English because of the way the King James Version was written, I was led to the Greek or the Septuagint translation. But looking at the Hebrew, it doesn't say seven full weeks but it actually says Sabbath. You see the word Sabbath day there. Shabbat. Shabbat. Or Sabbath. Understanding that the Hebrew actually trumps the Septuagint takes us back to where we're trying to understand how Enoch and Moses were determining their Sabbath days. So given everything that we've learned so far, we know as far as the seventh month and the first month of the year, the first, the eighth, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th days of the month are Sabbath days. And then based on everything that we learned from first Enoch, we now realize there is an alternative way of determining the Sabbath days based on the 91 day seasonal cycle. In other words, we have the new moon at the beginning of each of the seasons or the day of remembrance. This is the new moon that begins each of our seasons and the day that we're told that if we did not remember, we would actually lose track of all of the weeks, the Sabbaths, the feast days, the years and everything. 
So that day actually begins the cycle and the other way of determining the Sabbath days. For instance, in the year 2022, you had the new moon after the spring equinox to appear on April the 2nd. That would have began the first day of the first month. That means that the Sabbath day started on Saturday evening and lasted until Sunday evening. And then on May the 1st, when we saw another new moon appear, the Sabbath days would have started on the evening of Sunday and would have lasted until the end of the day on Monday. And then when we got another new moon on May the 31st, we would have also got a new Sabbath day, which would have been Tuesday to Wednesday. And then the next new moon appeared on June the 30th would have made the Sabbath day go from Thursday to Friday. So these days of remembrance, which began our seasons, is actually the basis for the sacred calendar. All of the sacred calendar is based on these four days. These are the most important days on the sacred calendar is actually what keeps the calendar aligned. Like it says here in the scripture, if we forget about those four days, we will forget about the Sabbath days, the seasons, the festivals, the years and everything. So they have to play a part in our calendar and how our Sabbath days are determined. But how does it work? Well, based on everything we've learned so far, we have the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd and the 29th day being the Sabbath days. But then according to the seasonal cycle, they actually don't change each month, but continue the same until the end of that season when we'll get a new Sabbath day. So in other words, looking at the season that we're in now that started back in December of the year 2022, the Sabbath days went from Saturday to Sunday and will remain the same until we get the new moon after the spring equinox there in March on about the 22nd when the Sabbath days will change from Wednesday evening to Thursday. So there you have your two ways of determining the Sabbath days. Like we said, on a seasonal determination, the Sabbath days remain the same for all 13 weeks. But on the monthly determination, the Sabbath days change with the new moon. So whereas we got a new moon on January the 22nd and the monthly Sabbath day changed to Sunday, Monday, the seasonal Sabbath days remained as Saturday, Sunday. So let's see if this lines up with the Pentecostal criterion. Again, we have the Omar counts supposed to start on the day after the Sabbath day, the 23rd day of the month. And then we're supposed to count seven complete Sabbath days, according to the Hebrew. And the 50th day is to fall on the day after the seventh Sabbath day. Well, look in here with April the 25th in the year 2022 being day one. That would make May the 2nd day eight. May the 9th being day 15. May the 16th being 22nd. May 23rd being the 29th day of the Omar, May 30th being day 36 of the Omar count, making June the 6th day 43 and June the 13th as day 50. So notice with this way of determining the Sabbath day, all of the criterion are met. We have seven complete Sabbath days. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and the 50th day landing on the day after the Sabbath day. Now notice that it landed on the same day here in the monthly determination, June the 13th, but that fell two days before the Sabbath day on the monthly determination, whereas it falls on the day after on the seasonal determination. So. There are your two ways of determining the Sabbath days. You have the monthly determination and then you have the seasonal determination. 
Let's look at it one more time so you can see the difference between the two. Because I asked you guys opinion on all of this. I mean, as far as we know, there's no schools or camps or religious institutions that teaches either of these ways of determining the Sabbath day. They have their set Sabbath day according to the planetary week, which would be Saturdays or Sundays or something like that, which don't meet up with any of the scriptural criteria. When you look in at the only two ways that aligns with scripture, one more so than the other, you have the monthly determination, which gave us a new Sabbath day back on January the 23rd from Sunday to Monday. And according to the monthly determination, we'll get a new Sabbath day on February the 22nd, going from Tuesday to Wednesday. Those on the seasonal determination will stay Saturday till Sunday until the new moon after the spring equinox, when we have a new day of remembrance there on March the 22nd. That's when the new season will begin and that's when they'll get a new Sabbath day from Wednesday to Thursday. But you guys let me know what you think about this in the comment section. I mean, we understand the importance of getting the Sabbath day right based on what we read in Ezekiel chapter 46 and verse 3. I mean, we learned back in Leviticus 23 and verse 3 that as long as we work six days and take the seventh day off, we meet the requirements. But Ezekiel chapter 46 verses 1 through 3 is promising some additional benefits on the correct day. In other words, that's the day when the inner court is open to our sanctuary, our third temple. That's the day in which we can expect a lot of spiritual benefits for those who actually call that day a delight. So it's important to get that day right. So let me know what you think in the comment section on which one of these methods is the correct way. The monthly determination of the Sabbath day or the seasonal calculation of the Sabbath day.